week I wanted to have a chat to you guys about a problem that's been plaguing me for some time. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to have a quick chat about the different types of medications that we use as asthmatics and also the equipment that we use to help our breathing. I find that a lot of doctors often prescribe the medications or the equipment without fully explaining how to use them to asthmatics. So I thought we'd start with some of the medications I'm on and also then go on to some of the equipment before we get into the rest of the video. Asmol. Asmol is also known as Ventolin. What Asmol is, is a substance or a chemical rather that you inhale into your lungs to relieve the bronchospasm of an asthma attack. So your Asmol actually fits into one of these beauties. So it goes, clicks in, then you press down and you get a puff. Now with puffers, oftentimes when you do take a puff, if it's just the puffer in your mouth, you will most likely have the chemicals coat the back of your throat rather than actually go into your lungs. You only get 30% or something like that. This is what we've got these beauties for. Now, this is called a spacer. Um, basically what happens is you'll see it's a little logo on here. I have Able brand. I really like Able. They work really well. So you put your puffer into here and then you just go down and it goes into the chamber in the chamber that mixes with the air that's already in there and from that point your doctor will tell you but generally you should take puff once and take four slow deep breaths before you puff again for up to four times next up i've got serotide so serotide is a preventer medication it comes in these purple puffers so all you have to do if you see it's closed so you turn it to the open position Put your mouth on this little mouthpiece here that comes into focus and you want to push this down to release the medication and breathe in from the mouthpiece. So the important thing to do with Serotide is to wash your mouth out after you've puffed it because it can actually give you oral thrush when it coats the back of your throat and you do not want that to happen. Next up in my line of prevention I have Pridisnolone. So this is a steroid that you take only periodically with asthma because it's pretty dangerous to be on it the whole time. Prednisolone basically helps to prevent asthma attacks help, um, actually happening in the first place. It's great for like when you have a flu or even to take the morning when you think you might be near someone that's one of your triggers. This one isn't really an asthma prevention. It's actually a medication that I take when I have panic attacks coming on. But panic attacks trigger, um, trigger can trigger asthma attacks sometimes. So this one's good to have around. It's known as Valium. I don't take it so much at the moment, if at all, because of work. But painkillers, because asthma attacks... Whoops. Asthma attacks do cause a lot of chest pain, residual chest pain after the actual attack itself. So I have these for other pain for endometriosis, it's panadine for it basically. But even just a normal panadol is handy. This little beauty is called a nebulizer. This is my last defense against an, an asthma. This is my last defense against an asthma attack. With a nebulizer, you get these little pipettes of medication. It's called salbutamol. So what happens is you also, with a nebulizer machine, get a face mask. And a little tube that comes with it. Now the face mask attaches to this little cup here which undoes and the medication would then be poured into there. Pop that in then you pop the cord on to this end. Look at me trying to get it in that's so stupid all my eyes. Pop the cord onto that end and then the other end of this cord would go there and you turn it on and that one basically I have if my puffers won't work and it's also the sort of thing that put you on in the hospital if you have an asthma attack and get delivered there. Change! So in the second half of the video what I wanted to talk about was asthma triggers. A lot of people have a lot of different triggers. For example here are just a couple of household products I had that would cause asthma attacks if I used them. My triggers, my biggest triggers are cigarette smokes, so things like smoking near me or having to walk past people on the street who are smoking or people who smell like cigarette smoke if I have to work closely with them or hug them or stand next to them will invariably set me off with an asthma attack. In a similar vein, perfume sets me off quite frequently, people who wear perfume too heavily or people who spray perfume near me. And my third biggest trigger is hot oil vapour, so the vapour that enters the air from hot oil vats and deep fryers, for example in fast food restaurants, agitates my lungs and makes me have an asthma attack. So one of the messages I want to get across in the second half of the video is when you go out in your daily lives, whether you choose to wear perfume or you choose to be a smoker, 
Your choice should not override the right a person who has asthma has to breathe and keep air in their lungs. And I think an important thing that people need to think about is, okay, you choose to smoke, that's great, that's your choice. But if you're smoking on the street, you could set off somebody else's asthma attack. Something like 400 million people worldwide have asthma, and about 250,000 people per year die of asthma attacks. And some things we need to consider when we make choices like to smoke in public or to apply hefty amounts of perfume or use spray deodorant in public, in bathrooms, in change rooms and how would it feel if your choice to do whatever you were doing triggered the asthma attack that killed someone's child or killed someone's parent or killed someone. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching as always. As always, don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up if you like the video, give us a thumbs up if you don't like the video. And I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.